This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, it's a good day to once again come together to devote a little time to God in the middle of the week. Um, based on the views I got last Wednesday, some of y'all were just here to see the baby. So I've got her again. I can't always promise she'll be here. At some point, it becomes unethical to use your child uh, for views on the internet, but for now, I'm fine with it. We're all doing good. Thank you all for your prayers and thoughts and um, support. Um, I hope everyone stayed safe last week in the weather. I hope everyone stays safe in the weather that's coming for those of you who are in North Carolina. And uh, let's just take some time to celebrate and praise God this week. Would you pray with me? New every morning is your love, great God of light. And all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. If you missed last time, uh, while I'm uh, still doing these devotions, and they may uh, stop for a brief period if I, uh, um, when I go on some leave, I'm just going to be, co be covering a psalm of the week. So each Sunday I'll put out a psalm of the week, and my hope is that we will all read it every day of the week. Um, sort of uh, praise God with that psalm during the week and see what it stirs up in us. And, and on Wednesday, I'll be talking about that psalm. So the psalm of this week was Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O God, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his works and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. There's so much in this psalm. But what I kept hearing was that word, all. All flesh will bless his holy name. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling. All, 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 every single All is an all-encompassing word. And for God, that is something sort of beyond our even comprehension. First of all, um, the psalm makes clear that God loves all creation, sort of the breadth and depth 
and width of creation and all of us who, who are among God's creatures. But then the psalm also says, one generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. So God's love and mercy also extends through time, through all time. And indeed, not, not just does God love and have mercy for everything, everywhere at all times, but everything that God does and says is faithful and gracious. The simplest sermon is love everyone. God does, and so should you. And I, uh, when I had occasion to do a lot of children's messages, that was the children's message about every other time. Jesus says, love everyone, right? I mean, it's, it's the simplest message to get across to a child. And, and plenty of Sunday sermons, mine and others, basically come to that. Love God, love your neighbor, right? Love everyone. But I worry sometimes that that has become more of a platitude than a challenge. Oh, love everyone. It is easy to say if you hear it over and over again, yeah, I love everyone. Jesus said so, so I do. Maybe some of you out there do, and I admire you for that. But the thing that struck me along with this, this psalm's uh, broad strokes of God's love and mercy for everyone at all times and all places, including those who, um, who are falling, who are bowed down, is this last, second to last verse, the Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. God's love is more vast than we can imagine. But just because God loves all things does not mean that God loves everything in the sense that God does not love our wickedness. God does not love our sin. God might love us through our sin, despite our sin, but God does not love the sin. And God does not love wickedness, but all the wicked he will destroy. This is why it is so important to uh, say that prayer of confession before we have communion. You might have noticed we always say a prayer of confession before we have communion. We maybe should say a prayer of confession every week, no matter what. Because again, unless you are more perfect than I, and that may be true, we all have sins to confess, times in which we have not loved our neighbor, times in which we have not heard the cry of the needy, times when we have contributed to someone falling, someone being bowed down, someone suffering or feeling unloved. Most of us, I will say, probably have wickedness to purge. There are times when uh, it is easy to feel superior, feel like you've made it to some level. Oh, I really, I really love everyone. And, and again, maybe you do. But seeking to love in any way like God loves, since we are people, is going to involve purging some wickedness. You know, uh, Jesus says, uh, basically, to get into heaven, you have to be like a little child. I fear that to become an adult means to become callous to some people, to ignore some suffering, to let your all be limited. 
perhaps to people like you, perhaps to places you've been. God's love isn't bound that way. And uh, to know that God might cause us to get down on our knees and ask for mercy. But that's a good thing because God has forgiveness. So there is so much praise in this psalm, so much grace, so much awe at what God does. But let's not make God too simple. Let's not make our faith too easy. God will have forgiveness for you. God will not leave you behind. But to really uh, praise and follow the God described in this psalm, most of us have a few steps left. Thank God we have each other for the journey. Would you pray with me? You want to pray? Almighty Lord, thank you for loving each of us as you have and loving this whole world and for making it a blessed place for us to have friends and family, relationships and joys. Lord, help us to remove our sin, our wickedness, our callousness, and our hard hearts that we might love you more, love our neighbor more, and see your all for what it is. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.